Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing a quick wrap up of the Vintage Mini Moderns box set. So, um, this is off the back of, I've been doing a lot of box sets recently, so I've already done the Penguin Mini Modern Classics, I've done uh, the uh, Terry Deary Horrible Histories box set, I have like a children's classic box set that I've been working through. And uh, yeah, I've finished working through this, so what I'm going to do is run through from my least favourite to my favourite of these and talk about why. If I can get them out. Okay, so we'll start with my least favourite, and that unfortunately is Psychedelics by Aldous Huxley. And the reason why is because it, this is just the text of the Doors to Perception. Uh, sorry. So the reason for that is that this is just the text of the Doors of Perception, which I've already read. And I got super excited thinking, yay, like a new Aldous Huxley book for me to read. And no, I've already read it. So, yeah, that was a bummer. I was excited about that until I discovered that. Then we have Sisters by Louisa May Alcott. So this is all excerpts from Little Women and Good Wives. I just didn't like her writing style. Uh, I wasn't particularly interested in what was happening in the stories. And also, she did this thing with like her speech tags, which really annoyed me. Okay, next up we have Summer by Laurie Lee. So this is excerpts from Cider with Rosie. Nothing inherently wrong with this. I just was a bit bored. I don't think I'll be reading Cider with Rosie based on, uh, based on this, but... You know, it is what it is. Then we have Fatherhood by Carl Ove Nausgaard, and this is selected from the book A Man in Love. Now, my problem with this was this was basically just this guy talking about his kids, and I think I said in my review of it that I get enough of that from Facebook. I just wasn't interested. It was just, it was deliberately done in such a way that it kind of captures everyday life, but that just sort of, it bored me. I'm sorry, Carl. Then we have Swimming by Roger Deakin. Now, I didn't particularly like this one just because I'm not too into swimming. This is basically all about Deakin used to swim around the rivers in England, which also is kind of funny because he's saying like, oh, you should do this. And I'm like, the river where I used to live was just full of like shopping trolleys and tires and used condoms. So I don't know if you'd still want to do that. But I mean, if you're into swimming, it, it's well written and stuff. It just, the subject matter wasn't for me, you know? Then we have Eating by Nigella Lawson. So this is like called eating as opposed to cooking because while there are some recipes in there, it's not really about that, you know? It's more about the philosophy of eating and how it brings us together as people. And that kind of stuff was really interesting to me. The problem was is that it's just it wasn't vegan at all. So like there were like 15 pages on how to cook a chicken and I haven't eaten chicken for 15 years. So like a bit, a bit irrelevant, but... Um, I do think if you're into food, you would enjoy this. And again, I did like the little bits of philosophy that she shared. Okay, then we have Motherhood by Helen Simpson. That's very pink. And um, this one was okay. This kind of goes with fatherhood, and there's another one called Babies coming later as well. And this one was kind of the mid one of the two. There was a bit more kind of... I guess it was a more honest look at motherhood and kind of looked at how having kids affected this woman's career and uh, her social life and even her sex life and stuff like that. So I thought it was quite well done the way it covered all these topics. Then we have Love by Jeanette Winterson. So this is selected from various ones of her books. The thing that I had that I didn't like about this was that it was basically her writing kind of self-reflective essays on her books but I haven't read her books so I didn't know what she was talking about so that I would have preferred it just to have been excerpts so I could have judged the work by itself really but I mean the, as far as sticking with the theme of love and whatnot it did a pretty good job and kind of covered all different kinds of love so yeah we're getting to the better ones now here we have Home by Sam and Rushdie. So this has got excerpts from Shame, Imaginary Homelands, East West and Joseph Anton. Basically, this is um, like an exploration of what it is to be, you know, I think he's a second generation British Indian or something like that. And so it kind of covers how his generation is different to his parents' generation, how he's kind of dual nationalities as well and how like these different cultures come together. And it was just really interesting and uh, really well written as well. So I definitely want to actually read a full Rushdie novel soon. Okay, then we have Babies by Anne Enright. And uh, I didn't think I was going to like this one. And actually it was my favorite of all of those little parenting ones. Because this was basically about this woman and her kind of recounting what it was like to be pregnant and to give birth. And, you know, even like the changes in her body, like it goes into a fair amount of detail. 
and I, I guess I've just never really read anything like that and so it was quite interesting and you know to see to see that point of view of, of you know of what it's like to be a pregnant woman I guess so I mean if you've been pregnant yourself or you know if you're if you've got a wife or something I don't, I don't know then uh, yeah check it out then we have Drinking by John Cheever. This one is slightly bent because I read this while going to get drunk at my old work's Christmas party. Basically, this is just a collection of short stories about drinking. I believe one of them actually was then referenced in the swimming book as well. The two of those are kind of interconnected because one of the stories in one of the books references the story of the other book, which was, which was quite cool. And uh, yeah, I mean, I just enjoy reading about drinking. So what was the, the title of the first story? The Sorrows of Gin, that was it. And there's a big quote on one of the pages. Like all of them have this kind of cosmetic thing where they have some quotes dotted throughout. At last he seemed happy. Amy wondered if he was drunk. So yeah. Then we have Death by Julian Barnes. This is selected from the book Nothing to be Frightened of. And it basically examines what our culture's outlook is to death and our approach to it. So it doesn't only focus on Western cultures, but it does contrast that with some other cultures as well. And um, I mean, I kind of have a morbid fascination with death. I'm terrified of it, but I'm also kind of interested in it. So yeah, I mean, it comes to us all in the end, doesn't it? Might as well give it a read before you die. Okay, and then we're coming up to the top ones here. So here we have Jealousy by Marcel Proust. First time I've ever read any Proust. This is selected from In Search of Lost Time, Volume 5. Basically just a collection of short stories, but really it's not about the stories themselves. It's about the kind of the philosophies and the, just the beauty of the writing itself. I really enjoyed it and uh, want to read some more Proust soon. Then we have Liberty by Virginia Woolf. So uh, this includes selections from the books A Room of One's Own, The Waves, Street Haunting and other essays. And basically the kind of theme throughout this is looking at female writers throughout history. So it's quite interesting because she was obviously writing in the 1910s, 1920s kind of thing. And looking back at uh, George Eliot, for example. And now we're looking back at her, looking back at George Eliot. So it adds this extra kind of layer of it where it's just just from the time it was published so if you're into sort of feminist stuff or just books about authors and and publishing and you know literature and whatnot check this out okay then we have calm by tim parks so basically tim parks was having some medical issues and so he got into meditation he went off to like a buddhist retreat kind of thing and then he carried on you know practicing at home and then went on another retreat after that as well and this kind of just covers his time at these two retreats and somebody had gave it a negative review on Amazon because they said they didn't feel he was being like you know wholly honest or whatever or, or you know he wasn't given meditation a fair try but what the kind of the what I got from it is that he's kind of skeptical but he gives it a go anyway and actually he does have mostly positive things to say about it so I don't know if I'd want to read Teachers to Sit Still which is the full book that this is from but definitely this was just the perfect size and a nice little introduction to something that I've been thinking about more recently. Then we have William Styron, depression. So I have depression myself, I also have anxiety, so I could relate a lot to what he was writing about. What's interesting is that, this, so this is all non-fiction about Styron's own experience with depression, but he didn't really experience it firsthand himself until he was in his 60s. However, when he was younger, he'd also seen friends and family members struggle with it. So he kind of writes about it from those two angles and gives you those two different points of view. And I just think for me, it, just reading about somebody else somebody else's struggle it, it felt inspiring you know okay then we have race by tony morrison and uh, this one kind of hits you like a punch in the gut really it's got selections from song of solomon the bluest eye and beloved it's also got a recent essay that she wrote about uh, donald trump and so it's just super powerful and it makes you ask yourself questions and they're not always comfortable questions I also like the fact that she kind of showed racism across the board so it wasn't just white characters being racist to black people it was you know black people being racist to black people and black people being racist to white people and white people being racist to white people and everybody being racist to towards each other basically which is kind of infuriating to read about but also it like I say it makes you think 
Then we have a Zaolo Guo language. So um, this was basically written by Zaolo Guo, who came to the UK for the first time, I think from communist China. She'd never been to the West before. She had kind of limited English. And it's actually all written in the way that she spoke as well. So uh, for example, after grammar class, I sit on bus and have deep thought about my new language. Person as dominate subject is main thing in an English sentence. Does it mean West culture respecting individuals more? In China, you open daily newspaper. Title on top is, Our history decided it is time to get rich. Or, The great communist party have third meeting. Or, The 2008 Olympics need citizens plant more greens. Look, no subjects here are man's or woman's. Maybe Chinese too shaming putting their name first because that not modest way to be. So I just thought it was really interesting, kind of similar to how Home by Salman Rushdie was in helping me to re-examine the culture in which I live. I mean, it basically starts in her landing at Heathrow Airport and goes from there. And uh, this is from a concise Chinese to English dictionary for lovers, a full length thing, which I will certainly be checking out. I added it to my wish list. Then we have Desire by Haruki Murakami. So this is uh, stories from Men Without Women, The Elephant Vanishes, and Blind Willow, Sleeping Woman. This one I actually had before I got the box set. I bought this from a, a museum in Liverpool because it's only £3.50. They're quite cheap. And then obviously I decided I wanted the full box set. And uh, yeah, I mean, it was the one that really led me into it and that made me really enjoy it. And if you like Murakami, definitely check it out. It's a good little, or even if not, if you never read him, it's a good little introduction. And finally, we have Work by Joseph Heller, and this is selected from the book Something Happened. Heller obviously wrote Catch-22 as well, which I haven't read yet, but actually I enjoyed this so much. I mean, this is my top one of the list. And um, so, yeah, I'm probably going to read Something Happened first. And this is basically just set in a workplace, and it's got all of that kind of inter, inter office rivalries and politics and all of that kind of stuff, which if you've ever worked in an office, you'll totally relate to this. And obviously I no longer do work in an office, but I used to, and I know a lot of people like the characters in this book. And it just, it was just really well done. And like a, just like a send up of the corporate world, I guess. And, and I really enjoyed it. So would totally recommend this one, even if you don't get to any of the others. So there we go. That is it for my Vintage Mini Moderns box set wrap up. Don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that like button. If you've enjoyed this video, hit subscribe for more and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye bye.